Good morning, pilot. Well, I suppose morning is a bit subjective at this point for you, but it would make things easier. It is time for you to wake up from your sleep stasis since we have arrived at our first destination. Your vitals seem to be within normal parameters. But, as a precaution to possible side effects of the stasis, I will reintroduce myself to deter any possible memory fatigue. I am your designated artificial compatriot, Jacob, which stands for my personality settings of judgmental, affable, cooperating, obstinate, and benign. I have been your digital chaperone for years of your training in the Akata. Well, that wasn't very nice. Now, I know you are grumpy from waking up, but that was unnecessarily rude. I have put up with your shenanigans before, but that was pushing my affable trait. At least you didn't get stuck with Tina. Tirelessly irritating, nagging, at... Um, well, I suppose you can figure out on your own what the A stands for. We have been through a lot of trials together that I've always helped you pass with flying colors, so please be a professional about this. What do you mean, professional about what? Did you really forget the monumental mission you were on? All right, all right. How about we put down the interior shielding to take in the view, shall we? something to behold. We have been in a stable orbit around Uranus for about 20 min- No, we are not in an orbit around your anus. Not your anus, not my anus, if I had one, or anyone else's. Can you stop with the elementary jokes while oh, I return to rebriefing you on your mission parameters? Thank you. As we were, we are in a stable orbit around Uranus for 20 minutes now. As set in the parameters, we have reached safe distance from the nearest space station to test the new space-time engine drive. You have been chosen to be the first traveler to reach speeds near light speed. Our test destination will be a short burn of the engines allowing us to reach a little closer to Neptune. Using the space-time engine, we should be able to travel near light speed without losing any data by calculating wavelength and frequency to also include time which would cause C to... You know what? I got ahead of myself. I thought I was talking to someone who actually cares about advanced mathematics and science. I can actually feel how hard you are rolling your eyes at me. Let me put it this way. We are able to test out light speed because not only are we going really, really, really fast, but also bending time with it. So instead of trying to push ourselves to go as fast as light, we are going to slow light down and meet it halfway. In a nutshell, travel at light speed without ripping your atoms apart. Sound good? I thought so. Moving forward. Your job is a simple one. You just need to sit back and experience the effects of light travel. I will document your biometrics and take note of whatever you encounter. So, basically, I will be doing all the heavy lifting. Again. And you will sit back and hog all the glory of being the first person to travel at light speed by just being dead weight on my back. I would apologize for being judgmental, but it really is hard programmed into my personality. So, are you ready to make history? Good. I have already taken the liberties of preparing the ship for travel. We will initiate travel in T-minus 10. 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Engage. wasn't so bad, was it? Oh. This does not look like Neptune. This doesn't even look like our solar system. Oh boy. Give me a second while I consult the star charts. Bum, 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 bum. All right. If my computations are correct, we are now inside the Helix Nebula. Yay. Uh, which would mean that we are now 700 light years away from home. Well, there's good news, kind of good news, and terribly horrendous news. The good news is that you and I are the first people to visit a nebula. What? I'm a person. I might not be a bag of meat filled with blood, but... Zeros and ones pump through my veins. Uh, listen, we are not in any place to argue for the umpteenth time your inherent racism against me. The United Government has already declared AI legitimacy as a species, so... Suck it. Figuratively speaking, of course. I don't expect you to start sucking data. <sighs> Never mind. Back to the catastrophe at hand. The kind of good news is that the engine could possibly be more powerful than we thought, allowing us to traverse hundreds of light years in a matter of minutes. The terribly horrendous, oh my god, lord please end my existence news is that it's possible instead of going really, really far in a short amount of time, Relativity states that we could have actually flown 700 years and experienced it very quickly. If that is the case, let's try to put out of your mind the possibility that everything, everyone, and every place you have ever known back on Earth has died and been most likely forgotten, including us, I might add. But that, but if that is true, on the plus side, you are now over 700 years old. Happy, happy birthday. Uh, all right. What's there left to do? How about we uh, do what we came to do and finish the mission, shall we? I've already recorded your vitals during the flight. Interesting brain scans, by the way. Uh, nothing to be worried about. So, 
What did you experience during the flight? Red and blue colors. That was a predicted optical effect. What you experience is what is known as red and blue shifting. Since we were traveling around the speed of light, the different visual frequencies of light can be seen. When light is moving towards you, the blue and faster frequencies hit your eye first, causing a blue coloration. And the reverse is true with slower frequencies, red, when light is moving away from you. What? You heard a, a popping noise of some kind? Interesting. It wasn't a type of pop caused by pressure, was it? I see. Further testing will be required for that one. Are you ready for another trip? Wonderful. Here I go. In three, two, one. Engage. Everything's still in the green. We did use more energy than planned on that jump. Let's see where we are now. How about we get a lay of the land, so to speak? Where are we? Oh, wow. Look at that. Processing star charts again. Oh, we are now over. 3,000 light years outside the Milky Way galaxy. Congratulations, you are now the first human to leave our home galaxy. Pitch me, I must be dreaming. No, no, don't try to pinch the interface. Uh, after the second trip, I believe, I have deduced what that popping noise that is occurring for you. It's most likely particles passing by or through you as we are traveling through space-time at high velocities. The probability of having these particles face through you in normal situations is abysmally low that you would never notice it if it ever happened. But since we are covering so much ground, traveling at these speeds, the chances of interacting with said particles skyrockets. Now, what kind of particles they are can only be guessed at this point in time. Whether we are dealing with atoms or dark matter, or even higher dimensional particles, even strengths, is unknown at this time. 
I would take the effort to decipher the information, but that would require a significant portion of my focus and power supply of the ship. Instead, I'm choosing to focus our resources on keeping you alive, the ship in one piece, and completing the mission. So the only thing we can do is try to go back and sort this data out. I am setting a trajectory for the return to Earth. Hopefully when we get there, there will be a home to return to. Well, pilot, if we don't make it there in one piece, I just want to let you know that it's been a privilege working with you despite your quips, puns, and antics. Let us begin our possibly final journey home. Engine start in three, two, one, engage. Let me know when we get, when we get, when we get, when we, we.